So let's talk about that motherfucker that nobody likes. Yeah, Christopher Columbus. Nobody fucking likes that dude because of a few things that he did. So they say, the fuck did he do? All right. Well, let's take out another moment of his life, as we've been doing on this channel. We've been taking day by day Christopher Columbus on this channel. We're still looking to uh, find... Uh, we're still looking, trying to find the records that fit the, uh, the uh, description, that fits the narrative. When I went to school in the 80s and 90s, I didn't learn about this stuff in school. So now they're bringing that shit up. I'm just trying to find that stuff in historical memoir. So let's go day by day in uh, Christopher Columbus. And all you little fucking lighthearted bitches should just fucking take off right now. Don't thumbs up or down, just get the fuck out. Because you ain't interested in this shit. You're only interested in yourself, bitch. Get out. The last video we talked about Christopher Columbus and the Azores. And a little bit of a uh, scuffle he had. A little bit of craziness. Okay, so now uh, we're going to get into him leaving the Azores and making his way for Lisbon. With the Portuguese people that some people talk some shit about now too, right? Remember, this channel is all about memoirs, uh, historical documents and... Uh, history books that reference to one thing or another thing, and so right now we're 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 going over uh, Christopher Columbus's journeys. This is coming right from the horse's mouth, as close as we can get to the horse's mouth, at least. Here in the year 1493, the exact date is March 5th, 1493. So after the Azores, some Portuguese officer came to uh, Christopher Columbus and says, "Hey, motherfucker." The king wants to talk to you. He heard about what you did over there in the Indies. Get off your fucking boat and come over here with us. Columbus is like, hey, fuck you, man. I ain't coming off this boat. I got the, I got all these Indians on here. I ain't leaving these people here and coming to you talking to you badass motherfuckers. It was, it was customary for any ship to be accompanied by uh, an officer to go see the king. So that's why they sent that, that dude with a bunch of... A bunch of uh, military men, to greet Columbus to tell him to come talk to the uh, sovereigns in Portugal. But Columbus didn't want to do it. He says, no way, man. Ain't doing it. Ain't getting off this boat and ain't coming to see nobody. I'm going to see people in Castile. Fuck you people. This, the, this is the description by Christopher Columbus. Then the Portuguese officers asked to see the patent. They want to know if he could prove he's from... Uh, the king and queen in Spain, or if he actually been to the Indies. And so, well, he had the Indians on board, but he showed them the patent, and then they were like, okay, all right, we're on your side now. Then the next day, a crowd of uh, Portuguese people came from Lisbon to go see Christopher Columbus and check out all the Indians that he had on the boat. Like, holy shit, this is crazy. Look at those people. And here's a motherfucker that went there and did this. Wow. I, I would guess that it would be just as exciting as Columbus and his people making it to um, the American islands and first seeing the natives. And it, it would be just as exciting as the people in Lisbon seeing those natives on Christopher Columbus's boat. They're like, wow, look at those people. They're so different. And so the people, some of, a lot of the people were uh, praising God. They're like, oh, Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for this, all this stuff. And then there was other people, of course, that were kind of pissed off. They're like, this motherfucker. He came here and he tried to get funding from us to go uh, to go do this. And we we uh, rejected him. And then he, he went to Spain and they funded him. And now he comes back with this shit. Look at that. It's fucking perfect. It's great. It's great what he did. And we should take the, the we should take the fucking uh, we should take the fucking credit for this shit. Not Spain. Damn it. Fucking stupid Columbus. I fucking hate you, Columbus. And the other people are like, hey, man, he's cool, man. He's he's on my side. He's like, fuck him. So eventually, uh, the king of Portugal um, started sending refreshments and and whatever Columbus wanted uh, to the boat. He's like, hey, t tell those guys whatever the fuck they want. We give it to them. That's the coolest shit in the world. We got to get on their side. We got to become friends with this dude now. We got to get... Uh, we got to benefit from this fucking shit that this guy's got. Wow, that's incredible. Send him whatever he wants. And tell him I want to speak with them. And uh, Columbus considered that at the very moment that 
he believed that uh, the sovereigns of Spain were in good ties with Portugal at the time. He believed. So on March 9, 1493, Christopher Columbus actually uh, ended up uh, hanging out with the king of Portugal and talking with them. He, uh, Columbus was a little skeptical at first of this motherfucker. But of course, the king of Portugal wanted to benefit from uh, what Columbus did. He's like, man, we got to get good with this dude. And so uh, after they did a little bit of talk in there and everything was cool, uh, the king of Portugal was like, hey, give Columbus and his people some lodging, take care of them, give them whatever the fuck food they want, and all is well. And specifically, the king ordered this dude, the prior of Crato, to uh, do all this. He's like, take care of him. Give him some lodging. Make sure all the sheets are clean. There's no bed bugs. Make sure everything's cleaned up. Make sure there's no crack pipes underneath the fucking dresser drawers. Clean that shit up. Give him some lodging. Take care of him. Give him some food. Yeah, Columbus stayed that whole Sunday and Monday there. And the king sent uh, Don Martin de Norona to uh, accompany Columbus and to talk to him and learn about all the shit that he's seen and so on and so forth. Yeah, but all the people of Lisbon were really into Columbus at the time. They're like, man, this dude says some fucking wild shit, man. We heard about it. Everybody's talking about it. Everybody knows about it, and this shit really happened. It's fucking cool as hell. So uh, that's just a little bit of history of Christopher Columbus making his uh, first trip back to Europe. So on Wednesday, March 13th, uh, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, Christopher Columbus raised sail to go to Seville, to Spain. And then he arrived at Palos Harbor, uh, where he was at uh, some seven months uh, prior. Seven months and 11 days since he uh, left uh, that harbor in Spain to go to uh, the American islands. And now he finally returned back to this motherfucker. And like I mentioned before, uh, in the earlier episodes about Pinzon, that motherfucker took off on Columbus trying to fucking reap the rewards uh, from the sovereigns, but when uh, Pinzon got to the uh, got got to the got to Spain and got to the, to the king and queen, they said, "Hey, man, don't fucking come here without Columbus giving us some bullshit that you did everything. Just wait till he comes back and you all get to talk to me." And the Pinzon was like, "So it was written, some fucking bullshit that Pinzon was so depressed." A few days later, he went home and he died in grief. He was like, "I'm so sad. I'm just gonna die," and he died. Three days, a few days later. So the story goes. And the funny thing is that Pinzon was, uh, when when Columbus was trying to recruit people to to believe in him to uh, go check out the Americas or dra uh, travel west, uh, people, a lot of people didn't believe, but some did. And the ones that did were all for it. And Pinzon was one of the people that were all for it and were like, hey, man, I'm going with you. I'm going to use my, I'm going to give you my ship. I'm going to go with you. We're going to make, make this happen. I'm on your side. Pinzon said that. And now Pinzon fucking took off on Columbus trying to fucking uh, take all the credit for it. And uh, the king and queen were like, fuck you, man. And so Pinzon died a few days later. When Columbus got to the area of Spain, uh, he got to Seville with, with hopes to get to Barcelona, where the, cat, the, the uh, Catholic sovereigns were staying at the time. And of course, there at the same at the same thing happened there in uh, the Spanish area, uh, where a bunch of people were greeting Columbus and talking about how how great of a dude he is, and all the Indians he had with him were like astonishing. He was like, "Wow, man, Columbus, you did it, man! I was on your side the whole time." He's like, "No, you weren't." Yeah, I was, man. It's so cool. I'm your friend. He's like, "No, you're not." But when Columbus got to the sovereigns of, of uh, Spain. He was well received, and uh, the king and queen gave him lodging, of course. And then King Ferdinand paraded through the streets uh, with a bunch of people talking about like how how great it was that they succeeded in finding new lands. Everybody was rejoicing at the time when Columbus returned in 1493. So this is the kind of shit that was going on when Columbus came back to Europe. In 1493, after his first trip from the Americas, this is the this is at least the description this motherfucker wrote in his uh, his book, so we could read about it in history. It might have it, it was 
most likely a really interesting thing. I mean, just imagine if I showed up to your house with a bunch of uh, indigenous people. Like there's still some people in the world today that live out in the middle of Africa or somewhere that that they they haven't uh, evolved. They live in like huts still, and they they don't have much clothes, and you know they 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 live off the um, the land like they did thousands of years ago, and they dress differently, and they still put like things in their their skin and different pain. Just imagine if I showed up to your house with a bunch of those dudes, you'd be like, "Holy fuck, where do these people come from?" But it was easy, even crazier back then because they didn't know about shit like that. Nowadays, we know because we have YouTube and TV and movies and shit like that. But back then, they didn't have, they didn't know that much more about um, shit, you know, far off lands and different cultures and shit like that. There was military men, and then there was uh, military men, and there was explorers and different people that had written about and went to Africa and different regions and the Azores and stuff and wrote about that kind of stuff. So where their average person in uh, Spain and Portugal or the rest of Europe would hear about this stuff, but they, uh, the, the average person didn't actually see it. Like everybody wasn't going to Africa back, back in those days. They read about it, but they didn't see it. And so when uh, Columbus came back with these people, a lot of these people, it was the first time they'd ever seen something uh, so different before. But of course, at the time, um, because of the conquest of the of Islam coming to Spain, um, they, these Arabs and uh, black Muslims were bringing people from Africa, the Africa region, to uh, Europe. So there was a presence of these pe- kind of people there that uh, of different cultures, and in, in Portugal as well. So even at those times, there were there were still um, up to that point. Uh, trading with a lot of these people and then enslaving a lot of these people from Africa. So there was a lot. They they were able to see this part of the culture, but it wasn't widespread. So a lot of the average people didn't see a lot of crazy shit yet at that time. But it was present. The different cultures were present in uh, Europe. Islam was trying to make their way into Spain and take it over. Just like nowadays in present uh, day, they're trying to take it over and put their culture and their every religion and everything on on Europeans and so on and so forth and take the women. You know how it is. But uh, that was going on back then too. So there was a presence of different cultures in Europe at that time as well. And it's it's it's, it's hard to... It, it wasn't until like many years later until after the Inquisition and all this kind of stuff, uh, fighting back for lands, um, till when a certain uh, time in history, when you went to f- France... You've seen French people, and you had French food, and you heard the French language. And then when he went to Germany, and when he went to Spain, and when he went to uh, Italy, that you would exclusively hear almost exclusively uh, that language from the region and those people from that region. But nowadays, in uh, the 2020s, uh, in present day, now when you go to Europe, it's mixed with a lot of Africans and Arabs and Islam right now and i've heard a lot of those states actually uh are going to be possibly the minority um of the indigenous people of the of the of those regions and if you walk down some streets in france you might think you're in uh afghanistan but i think a lot of europe was trying to cleanse themselves of that type of invasion back then to where up until a, a couple decades ago uh it was pretty much exclusively those people of that region like I said, French uh, French people in France and Italian people in Italy and Spanish people in Spain, so on and so forth. But the ratio of what it was like in Portugal and uh, Spain at the time, I'm not very exactly sure yet. Because Portugal at that time was really making their ways into Africa. And so there was a lot of slavery going on between them and the uh, Trans-Saharan, um, Trans-Saharan slave trade at the time. So there was probably a lot of different people from Africa in Portugal at least in the big cities probably, right? Or by the sovereigns. But either way, Christopher Columbus was well well received when he came back. So that's that's all this um, episode is about because I'm going day by day Christopher Columbus on this channel, among other things, and just going over historical memoirs and notes and perspectives, and uh, you can check it out. And if you're not interested, you can go fuck yourself because this channel is made to, meant to do what it does, and if you don't like it, you go fuck yourself. Like, don't go to the fucking beach unless you're going to go swimming or enjoy the sun. 
Don't order a bunch of fucking food if you ain't going to eat it. And don't fucking come to this channel unless you acknowledge what it is and appreciate it, you fucking bitches. Now get the fuck out. Subscribe, like to this channel, and go fuck yourself. Adios. Oh, yeah, and share this fucking video. Because a lot of these motherfuckers downvote, down, uh, thumbs down on this bitch, so the algorithm says don't share my shit. So YouTube and Spotify, all these motherfuckers don't share it because all these fucking cunts, the, I mean, these fucking, fucking mouthless bitches that can't say shit besides fucking hate, these motherfucking cunts downvote so my shit don't get shared through the algorithm, these motherfucking bitches. But they ain't got nothing to say because they're fucking weak. They're weak motherfuckers, that's right. They're weak. So be strong. Send this shit out to get the message out. The real fucking history. Buy the memoirs. They send none of this fucking dumbass propaganda bullshit that these leftist fucking cunts got to try, try to feed everybody about how fucking bad everything is in their fucking goddamn stupid perspective. Share this shit with your friends and enemies. I'm going to post on different platforms because these motherfuckers are going to try to take this shit down. There's already people censoring me, giving me fucking strikes and all this shit. Fuck these motherfuckers, man. If I was the kind of person to talk of shit about America, how fucking bad America was, I'd get away with murder with these motherfuckers. But I don't, so these bitches want to attack me. That's right. Fuck those motherfuckers. Anyways, that's it. Adios.